Hey guys, welcome to the channel and another video. Today I'm going to be watching The Pianist by Roman Polanski starring Adrian Brody. I know Polanski as a very famous but controversial director. I'm not here about the controversy, but I have seen one of his films on the channel, uh, Chinatown starring Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway. It was excellent. Do check it out when you have the time. I am a big fan of Adrian Brody's work though, uh, but I haven't seen too many films from him, I guess. Uh, the last I saw him was in Peaky Blinders, a great TV show. I have seen The Pianist running on TV, but that too, almost, what, 15 or 17 years ago now? Uh, I don't remember much except uh, the premise, which was Brody's character plays a Jewish pianist trying to survive World War II, if I'm not mistaken. I think I remember a couple of heartbreaking scenes here and there, but like I said, I, I, I watched that, what, 17 years ago now? I was barely a teenager, and I guess I didn't appreciate the gravity of the film's message or story, if that makes any sense. I'm glad that I get to watch it as an adult to see why it won so many awards, so many Oscars. Why is it so acclaimed? But before we get into it, to help support the channel, I have a Patreon page for full-length reviews and reactions to this movie and over 170 movies, TV shows, early access, and weekly polls for what to watch next. You'll need your own copy to watch along. The link's in the description below, by the way. Please consider being a Patreon. Please subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon for instant notifications. Do check out my other videos. Like if you like this video. Dislike it if you didn't. With all that being said, let's get started. The Pianist, Polanski, Brody, Let's go. Warsaw, 1939. I've heard this piece before. I like the watch. It's most likely a Cartier tank, if I'm not mistaken. Adrian Brody, the pianist. Oh, the war must have already started. And I have watched um, Schindler's List on the channel. <gasps> Hello. Oh, it's nice to meet you. I love your play. Mama! Where is Oh, this is his family. Okay. Where are we going? Out of Warsaw. Out of Warsaw, where? Can you imagine just packing all your belongings and just leaving? Uh, look, look. I'm going to die. I prefer to die in my own home. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Has declared war on Nazi Germany. <laughs> oh, they declared war on Nazi Germany. So this must be September 1939. And they're celebrating, thinking the Allies will win a swift victory. And looks like they didn't decide to leave. And knowing the reputation of this film, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure Roman Polanski will not shy away from the atrocities of war. 5,003 Zlotys, all we got left. It's 3,003 Zlotys too much. Jews will be allowed to keep a maximum of 2,000 Zlotys in their homes. The Germans go into Jewish homes and they just take what they want. Furniture, valuables, anything. That's true. <laughs> And you call me stupid. No, that is very good. I don't believe I recognize any of the actors apart from Brody. Yes, I know, but I'm good at music. Nothing, no radios for the So he's pretty much out of a job. I like Diorak for Oh, the amazing. sister. Last he gave in and said, all right, come with me tomorrow. So I came and... There's always time for love. And you? What do you do? Oh, I finished at the conservatoire. Oh, you're a musician. Yes. What instrument? The cello. Choose forbidden. This is disgraceful. How dare they? It's so humiliating, someone like you. Find someone else. We could walk in the park. No, we can't. No Jews allowed in the park. Holy crap. And who's your favorite composer? Chopin, really? Well, you'll have to learn to play his cello sonata, won't you? I love the short compositions. They're so intimate. Call me Vladek, please. Jews who do not respect this decree will be severely punished. I was worried. Again, excellent shot composition. See? He was just walking down the street, fam. It's, it's going to be a hard watch, isn't it? It's where they're going to put us. What do you mean, put us? Oh, the ghettos. We'll be created a Jewish district in which all Jews living in Warsaw or moving to Warsaw will have to reside. The beginnings of segregation. It's too small. There's, there's 400,000 of us in Warsaw. No, 360,000. So it'll be easy. The sarcasm is coming out of anger and frustration. 20 zlotys. <gasps> That's all we have left. No money. 20 zlotys. 
because no income, because no jobs for Jews. Two thousand, and my advice is to take it. Dude, what are you gonna do? Sharks. Hungry? Eat the piano. Sharks, man. I'm doing you a favor. <laughs> Two thousand, and I'm paying for the removal. Take it. Oh, that hand gesture went such a long way. And holy crap, look at the large sets. Oh man. I want to see all this, but I couldn't stop myself. What are you doing? Fine. Good. This is disgraceful. It won't last long. Don't worry. Goodbye. Why do I have a feeling that this is the last time they see each other? I thought it would be worse. Come and look. <gasps> And they're literally walling off the neighborhood, the, the Jewish district, the ghetto. Oh man, are they selling off their books? A tall, a tall handsome I'm man sorry. with a little grey beard. No? Try not. I spent half my time here waiting for them to let us through. Was mit dir? Willst du mich auch mit tanzen? So, jetzt machen wir mal die Straße frei für einen Judentanzplatz. This is so degrading, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, I have a feeling this film is going to get harder and harder to watch every, every second. We're recruiting. Who's recruiting? Don't be clever with me, Henry. I'm coming as a friend. We need more Jewish police. <gasps> Your whole family can have a better life. You want to go on struggling for survival selling books in the street? Yes, please. Yeah, I understand that. I know your name. I've never heard you play. Majorek used to be in the army. Brilliant man. Germans never use Jewish toilets. Let's clean for them. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Stop it! Stop it! Oh, oh man! Come on, boy. Is he dead? Fuck. What do you even say to that? And please, tonight, for once, I don't want anything bad talked about. They don't even notice what's going on around them. I blame the Americans. For what? For my tie? American Jews, and there are lots of them. Oh. That's a bit of social commentary which is still relevant now. Oh. Wait, wait. Alfred! No, Alfred! Oh! Dude, he's in a wheelchair. I don't think he can stand up. Throw him out? Whoa! What the actual? Whoa. Why? I mean, they're not even giving reasons or accusing them of anything. Whoa. And there's no escape. They're literally... They're rats in a barrel. They're, 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 this is a sport for them. I have watched Schindler's List, which was extremely ah! difficult, but I mean, <laughs> Polanski isn't holding back. Oh man, I'm not going to enjoy this. I don't think it's meant to be enjoyed though. They've taken Henrik. Wait, wait. Henrik is the brother? Henrik's in there. I haven't seen him. Oh, right believe here. me, they picked him up. Tough luck. Look at him beating his own people. Can you help? Oh, now you need me. I have to say, Brody's performance is pretty insane. Oh man, that was food. <sighs> They've released Henrik. I was about to ask why they detained him, then I realized they probably have no reason. He just looked at them funny, probably. Or they thought he looked at him funny, or something even less than that. I can look after myself. They were taking you away. It's got nothing to do with you. Dude, why is he so resentful? What's that mean, no employment certificate? You have to have an employment certificate then. I work for one of the German firms in the ghetto, otherwise... Otherwise what? You'll be deported. Send us to labor camps in the East. Oh man, the labor camps. The infamous labor camps. And I've managed to get one for me and the rest of my family, but I need another one for my father. And I've been to all the firms and the shops. And Why didn't you come to me? Can you help? No money. Please, don't insult us. Can you do something for him? What a good man. So they're getting resettled again to somewhere else? Dude, 
look at them. I don't even have a room anymore. It's just a mess hall. So are they just picking random people to execute? Why? The certificates would save us. Stop it, Vadek. Another six months have gone by. Why did they do it? You can see them literally going down the ladder. From a proper house, to the ghetto, to a mess hall, now literally on the streets. Putting his personal controversies aside, he's an excellent filmmaker. Seriously. I, I just know that it'll stay with me for a long time. Don't you have a drop of water? He's dying. My child's dying of thirst. Henrik! Alina, Henrik! Oh, thank goodness. For a second there, I thought they were being sent to one of those concentration camps. At least the family, they're back together. What did she do, for God's sake? She smothered her baby. <gasps> they prepared a hiding place, so of course they went there. But the baby cried just as the police came. <clears throat> she smothered the cries with her hands. The baby died. <laughs> if you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? Shakespeare, the Merchant of Venice. Idiot. What do you think he's going to do with the money? How much for a caramel? Twenty zloty. 20. Oh man, they're dividing a small caramel between like six people. Yeah, I have to admit, it's not only Adrian Brody, the entire cast is just insane. I've seen these trains before in Schindler's List. These people have no idea where they're heading off to. I wish I knew you better. That's quite heartwarming. Thank you. You can see the effect that it had on, on his sister. And that statement goes to show how, how time passes and you should take the opportunity to spend time with your family. <laughs> he knows that they're being sent to a concentration camp, so they're saving Vladik. They can't save the whole family. What do you think you're doing, Spielman? I've saved your life! Now get out! Just go! Go! Oh man, he's all alone now. Don't run! The Off they go to the melting pot. And they're laughing. They're laughing. Absolute silence. Just emphasizing the loneliness and... What do you even say? What do you even say to these... Dead children, man. It's interesting how Roman Polanski showed this place full of life just about 20 minutes ago and it's just wasteland. Oh? Why are you here, Vladek? Look at the state of the buildings. I've seen pictures of World War II and they look exactly like this. Look at the non-Jewish people. It looks like a regular market. Oh, <gasps> she's here. Hey, Just randomly selecting people to kill them. Can you imagine the psychological horror waiting for him to reload the gun? Thanks, so. His only ally just died. How long have you been here? Oh. Since last night. I remember him. We're going to start the final resettlement now. We're 60,000 left out of half a million. Mostly young people. Because of the labor potential. I mean, clearly not all Germans, they were bad guys, but if you didn't follow the SS's order, they'll kill you too. You can make good business out of the things you don't eat. Isn't that something where your Jews are good in? Make money? Oh. That's a perpetuated stereotype. A pistol. I have a favor to ask. I want to get out of here. That's quite a favor. It's easy to get out. It's how you survive on the other side that's hard. I know. I saw someone I knew. He's accepting the money now. 
which he didn't earlier, but even his circumstances have changed. Grain. Belügst du mich nochmal? Erschieß ich dich. Höchstpersönlich. Well, I don't doubt his words. They don't live there anymore, but do you make contact? You're ready to leave. Hast du warum wir euch verprügeln? Warum? Um Silvester zu fallen. To celebrate the new year. It's his time to leave. A bath. Such a luxury. You must hurry. I'll show you where you're going to sleep. Flat for you. Near the ghetto wall. But it's safe. There were so many good people just helping and doing their part. This film reminds me a lot of Shinju's List. You must feel better on this side of the wall, huh? Yes. But he hasn't seen his family in like a year and a half. I need a Nina. Good Let's go we'll visit twice a week. Bring more food. See how you are. In case of emergency, go to this address. That'll be important to the story, I'm sure. There's a piano. April 1943. Oh! That's the Jewish resistance that we heard about earlier. Oh man, talk about an overreaction. They burnt it down, they burnt the freaking building down. I wonder what Vladek is thinking. Oh. Polanski, he's not using music in these very intimate moments. I never should have come out. I should have stayed there and fought with them. Vladek, stop that. And that was what he's thinking. He wants to fight at this point. I'm on the run. Now what's happened? Gestapo found our weapons. They've arrested Janina and Andre. Oh, <gasps> Janina's arrested. Time is running out. Can you imagine the psychological state you have to be to just ready yourself to jump out of a window if they knock on the door? Yeah, he looks noticeably weaker. And the music stopped. Oh, man, no. It's time to go, my friend. You're not registered. It belongs to a friend of mine. I just came to visit, but I must have just missed him. Have you got your identity card? Oh man, she looks evil. She sounds evil. He's a Jew! It's you! Stop the Jew! He's out and alone. I've had Polish friends, and they've told me how winter is like in Poland. Yeah, one of my flatmates was Polish. Mr. Gubczynski sent me. Oh, it's that emergency address. I need somewhere to stay. Yes, son. In Azurek. Dead. <gasps> Yurik is dead. We can't move you tonight. You'll sleep on the sofa. I'm sorry, could I, could I have a piece of bread? Y yes, of course, we'll eat. That's Bach. I love this piece. And she was a cellist. That much I remember. I've been locking you in. No one knows you're here, so keep as quiet as possible. Although there's a piano next to him, he can't play it. He can't make any sound. What a beautiful scene, isn't it? This is Antek Shawas. He will be looking after you. Nothing to worry about. I'll visit often. We're pleased to hear that the Allies are bombing Germany. Night after night after night. Um, another couple of weeks or months must have gone by. He has a beard now. Still alive then? Dude, you can... Adrian Brody's a thin man, but he even lost more weight. Why didn't you come sooner? It's been over two weeks. I've had problems. No! Yeah. Not the watch. Food's more important than time. 
And he's down to his last potato. Malek. Malek. The jaundice. The doctor. You can't, it's too dangerous. Liver the size of a football, acute inflammation of the gallbladder, but he'll live. <gasps> Thank goodness. August 1944, so a couple of more months have passed. This film feels so intimate in the sense that they're not focusing on the big battles or the war or anything like that. It's just the story of this pianist. The uprising has begun! Oh! Oh man, they're going to burn down the entire neighborhood and he has to move again, I bet. Funny how humans can desensitize themselves to violence like that. I mean, you could classify this as a horror movie at this point. Where does he even go from here? I guess they just piled it up and burnt the bodies as much as they could. Again, these sets, these props, the production and the end of this movie has been on another level. He looks to be in a terrible shape, being lost in his own hallucinations, I'd say, at this point. Look at the physical acting from Adrian Brody here. <gasps> It's the other side of the wall. It's the ghetto side. It's unrecognizable. And the use of absolute silence only amplifies his absolute loneliness and desperation here. <gasps> the will to live, man. The will to live. I'm having a very difficult time with this movie. I think the piano sounds represent his will to live. It gives him hope. And that's something they can never take away from you. That's a line from uh, V for Vendetta, my favorite comic book adaptation. Oh, don't waste the water. Oh, holy crap. These books are off, man. Do you? <laughs> Do you live here? Ich bin. Ich war pianist. Pianist. Looks like he's almost curious. He didn't call for backup or anything. I guess he's in charge of this entire situation. He's in control, so I don't think he feels threatened. <gasps> we did hear a piano earlier. Will his fingers even work? Dude, Polanski is taking so much time. Again, the lack of music here. Doesn't appear like a sadist. And the dude is clearly moved to almost tears. He might be SS, but he's a human first. This is a twist I did not see coming. He wasn't renowned for nothing. He, he's clearly an excellent pianist. Sie hatten sich hier versteckt. Haben Sie was essen? Oh man, what a powerful scene. <gasps> Holy crap. Bottom food. Was bedeutet die ganze Schießerei? Die Russen auf der anderen Flussseite. The Russians are coming. Some bread and jam. Oh, this must taste like the best thing he's, he's ever had probably in his life. Look at the acting. More time has passed and they're finally moving out. Sind die Russen da? Right. He's clearly a good man. 
Was werden Sie eigentlich tun, wenn das hier alles vorbei ist? Ich werde wieder Klavier spielen im, im polnischen Rundfunk. Sagen Sie mir Ihren Namen. Ich werde die Ohren offen halten. Spiel mal. I, I, I wouldn't know how to thank that man. The Polish flag, which must mean good news. But you're wearing an SS uniform, man. They think he's German. Take it off, take it off, take it off. Don't you like beg you my Polish and full. Calm down! Yes, he's Polish. Why the fucking coat? I'm cold. Oh man. Look at you now! You took everything I had. Me, a musician. <gasps> Dude's a POW now. This is musical. Pianisten. Ein Spielmann, polnischer Rundfunk. Doch, natürlich kenne ich den Spielmann. Ein Spielmann geholfen, während er sich versteckt hält. Dude. Sagen Sie, hey. dass ich hier bin. Hey! Wie heißt so. du sie? Wo ist ein <lacht> This movie's got me feeling bad for a Nazi. <lacht> I can't believe it. Look at him. <lacht> this, this shot just made me so happy. <lacht> it was here, I'm certain of it. I shouted abuse at them. I'm not proud of it, but that's what I did. Oh, he's gone. And I'm certain I stood where you are now. You can see the change <laughs> in color of the film during the war and post-war. I've heard this piece before. The name of the German officer was Captain Wilm Hosenfeld. All that is known is that he died in a Soviet prisoner of war camp in 1952. Oh, man. <laughs> what an ending. Based on the book by Spielmann. That means it's a true story. Holy crap. I did not know that. I knew it was based on a book, but I didn't know it was by the same exact man. So it's like a memoir. Okay. I took some time to collect my thoughts. First off, that was a hard watch. I had a very difficult time finishing this movie. And I mean that in the best way possible. I would compare this film to uh, Spielberg's Schindler's List, but taking a different approach to the same story. This felt extremely intimate, and I think that was Polanski's goal here. His direction was near flawless, the performance from Bode Brody was Oscar-worthy, and the production end was also some of the best I've ever seen. This was a near masterpiece of a film and I don't think I have any outright criticisms here. Polanski had my attention the entire two and a half hour runtime. Let's start with the directing by Roman Polanski and the screenplay by Ronald Harwood. I know that it was based on the novel of the same name uh, but by uh, Spielmann but what I didn't know was the fact that it was based on a true story. Spielmann actually existed and that made the impact of the story ten times greater for me. I can't imagine what that man went through. I can't even begin to imagine. Even if what half of what was shown was true and I have no reason to doubt it, it was one of the greatest stories of survival I've ever seen. I really finally see why this film was and still is held in such high regard. Let's talk a little about the story. Polanski spends no time in setting up the plot as we are introduced to uh, Vladek Spielmann, a renowned pianist for a Polish radio station. The war starts immediately in September 1939 and we are right in the thick of it as the Spielmann family is forced to move to a specialized district for the Jews, which is essentially a ghetto in all but name. The entire story is told from the perspective of Vladik, and I felt like that was a brilliant choice, uh, narratively speaking. Polanski doesn't focus on the larger war at play. We only get to hear about the war through um, other people or through the papers or the radio. This way we can focus our entire attention on the horrors of this one man and his family to some extent, which we inevitably project onto every other person we see suffering throughout the film. Horrifying. I think food was an important theme in the film that, that was focused on multiple times. 
we see them eating worse and worse food as time goes by. At the beginning of the film, we see them having a feast as they were celebrating the fact that Germany and France declared war on Germany. But by the end, we, we see Spielmann drinking dirty water out of a bucket. So just downhill. We see the degradation of Spielmann's clothes over time too, uh, which was very telling of the daily conditions that he was staying in. And um, it was also a great way to show the passage of time. Polanski used other ways to show that, um, including changes in the weather, uh, fadeaway transitions, and the slow destruction of Warsaw and the other places that Spielmann ended at. One thing I was a little mixed on, I guess, was that there were there was no conclusion on the rest of Vladek's family. Uh, they just disappear at the end of the first act. Uh, I assume that they were taken to a concentration camp. We get no answer on it. We kind of have to assume that they died along the way. And speaking of death, the number of decomposing bodies on the streets was absolutely horrifying to watch. The Jews were shown to be killed off for no reason at all. They were marching, they, they get stopped. <laughs> some of them are randomly told to step forward and they're, they're, they're just shot. That had a profound impact on me, especially the dead children. I don't handle things like that very well. The piano and the piano sounds, the pieces that were played, they were used to great effect in this movie. I think they signified hope in our protagonist, that's what I assume, at least. They can take everything away from you except hope. Every time Spielman thought or even pretended to play the piano, it was almost like he was at peace with himself, if just for a second. That was incredibly, incredibly powerful. The film unfolds over the course of the entire war, I think over five years almost. And I felt like I was almost there with Spielman as he became thinner and thinner and weaker. Polanski made the audience feel like a fly on the wall, almost voyeuristic, for lack of a better word. It was almost like we couldn't help him as we saw him suffer. I don't know. I, I also have to commend Polanski for showing the good and bad in both the Germans and the Poles. What I mean by that was, was he wasn't scared of showing... Jewish people in the smaller ghetto in the earlier part of the film, they were profiting off uh, jewelry and other probably legal, I, I wouldn't say illegal, but other means. And he also showed the German officer who helped Spielmann at the end. And I think that made a powerful statement too, in a sense. I think he was trying to show that humanity doesn't die even at the bleakest of times. I don't know what else to say except that it was written and directed to perfection. Although Chinatown, which I saw on the channel, was more of a film goer's film, it was noir, this felt more like an actual documentary. About the performances, I did not recognize any of the actors apart from Brody, but that's a good thing, I think. Often when I see famous actors on screen, I might imagine the actor and not the character, so it kind of, I wouldn't say ruins the immersion, but it does take you out a little. The fact that he chose less famous actors, but they're still incredibly talented, really immersed me <laughs> into this narrative. The standout performance was obviously from Brody, by far. <laughs> I was almost moved to tears by his performance. Uh, I believe he did win the Oscar. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I know it got nominated for a bunch of Oscars, and uh, I know he was nominated at least, so I'm guessing he won it, because I know that Brody did win an Oscar over his career. It has to be this film. He would have won the Oscar that year, regardless of anybody he was up against. I don't know which other actors he was up against in 2002, but he deserved that. I'd go as far as to say this was probably the best performance of his career. Everything from his physical demeanor uh, to scenes where he doesn't even say a single word. I could just tell what he was thinking just through his eyes, his eyes alone. Just amazing. 
Moving on to um, the cinematography and camera work, both were brilliant. The way Polanski and the cinematographer played with light and color was excellent. The beginning and the end of the film, they really stood out. They were highly saturated, almost full of life. As compared to the meat of the film, the main uh, two hours, that was very desaturated and dead and cold, which with, with bluish tones to highlight the harshness of the Polish winter. The degradation of Poland itself was captured beautifully on screen. And I, when I mean beautiful, I don't mean it in a traditional sense. I mean it in a I mean it from a production standpoint, if that makes any sense. I really don't know how they achieved the shots of these disintegrated, broken buildings. Was it CGI or was it practically done? I need to find out. And I will, by the way, after, <laughs> after, after the review. The props, sets, costuming were some of the highest caliber I've seen. Uh, I don't know what the budget of this film was, but it had to be high. Uh, the number of extras... Um, the largeness of each of these sets, the facades, the buildings, they all looked real. Like I said before, it really felt like a personal, intimate story that Polanski, who also lived through the war, wanted to tell, wanted to show. I don't know whether to consider this film his magnus opus, but it was definitely way, way, way up there. I need to see more Polanski feels to make a definitive judgment, but I don't think too many people would argue that this was probably one of his finest films. Everything, everything from a directing, writing, and production point, it was near perfect. I don't have any, 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 any criticisms of the film at all. Overall, The Pianist might have been the greatest survival story I've ever seen. The will to live and the perseverance of the human spirit is what drove Roddick Spielman to survive. Adrian Brody's Oscar-winning performance, I assume Oscar-winning, was well worth his effort. His acting was on another level. Um, the direction by Roman Polanski was almost flawlessly executed along with the writing and the production. And This film will stay with me for a long, long time. And just like Schindler's List, I don't think I can watch it for quite some time too. Thank you so much for the suggestion, guys. Um, I really needed to see this film, and I highly recommend it for anybody and everybody. Thank you for watching. I have a Patreon page. Consider being a patron. Subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon for instant notifications. Do check out my other videos. Like if you liked this video. Dislike it if you didn't. I will see you in the next one. Bye.